Good morning, everybody. How are you? My name is Amanda, and I am back with our next Sunday School story. This week, we're going to read the story, Nana Aku Goes to School. Here we go. It's circle time, Zara's favorite time of the day. She scoots to a spot next to Theodore and crisscrosses her legs on the rainbow-shaped rug. Ready, set, Miss Dawson says, looking at the children over his, Mr. Dawson says, looking at the children over his glasses. You bet, they respond in quiet, right down. Next Monday is a very important day, Mr. Dawson continues. Each of you will bring your grandparents to school so they can share what makes them special. Yay! Grandparents' Day! shouts Alejo without raising his hand. My abuelo is the best fisherman in the world, and he can explain how he catches the biggest fish. Biso thrusts both hands up and says, My Mimi is the best dentist in the world. She can bring everyone a toothbrush. All the children chime in, their voices leaping over each other to tell what's best about their grandparents. Inside voices, please, says Mr. Dawson. What do yours do? Theodore whispers to Zora, but Zora just shrugs. When Zora's papa brings her home from school, Nana Aku, her favorite person in the whole universe, is peeling potatoes for dinner. Although Nana's feet don't even reach the floor, she seems as tall as the giant playground slide. Maybe that's because she's filled to the brim with stories about growing up in West Africa, where people carve statues out of wood, trees drip with mangoes, and crayon-colored outdoor markets sell everything you can imagine. Nana puts down the peeler and gives Zara one of her big hugs, the kind that wrap around you like a sweater. Grandparents' Day is next week, she says. Maybe you can help me decide what to talk about. Zara stares down at the floor. Zara's mama knows about Grandparents' Day, too. Her smile is bright as a sunbeam. How about if Papa plays the djembe drums while Nana talks to your classmates, she suggests, coming over to help Nana. Zara frowns and thinks about the last time she and Nana went to the park. Nana pushed her high to the sky on the swings and Zara was almost flying. But on their way home, a little boy pointed at Nana and Zara heard him say to his mother, that lady looks scary. And the very next day, a server at the little tea house stared so hard at Nana, she forgot to bring them their sugar cookies with their tea. This is because Nana Aku looks different. When she was young, her parents followed an old African tradition. They put marks on her face to show which tribal family she belongs to and to represent beauty and confidence. Those marks never wash off and never go away. Zora looks at her Nana, holding back tears that wait in the corners of her eyes. Nana Aku puts down her potato, takes Zara's hand and says, my precious girl, why such a sad face? It feels hard to explain, but Zara wants to try. She swallows and takes a deep breath. <sighs> what if someone at school laughs at you or acts mean? She asks quietly. Nana Aku thinks for a moment. I have an idea, she says, and puts Zara's arm through hers. Together, they walk down the hall to her room. Nana points to the bed. How about we bring your favorite quilt to class? These quilt patterns come from another long ago tradition. Even though they are not exactly the same as the marks on my face, they can help explain them. What do you think? Zara traces some of the designs she loves with her fingers. When Nana Aku first made the quilt for Zara, she explained that the patterns were Adinkra symbols of the Akin people of Ghana. The symbols represent more than 50 important qualities like wisdom and creativity. 
Zahara wishes the marks were only on the quilt and not on Nana, on Nana Aku's face. Still, she says, okay, we can bring it. On grandparents' day, Zara wears one of her African dresses sewn by Nana, and Nana Aku looks especially regal in her bright patterned kaba with matching skirt and head wrap. There are lots of oohs and ahs when they arrive. The classroom is decorated with a rainbow of balloons that float up to the ceiling. There are large welcome signs made with colorful markers. A tall chair is on the rug for the grandparents to sit in when they speak. First is Alejo's abuelo who passes around photos of the biggest bluefish he ever caught. Next, Bisu's Mimi shows the class a video called Mr. Cavity and the Magic Toothbrush. And then Lester's grandparents, who owned a barber shop for many years, hold up matching clippers. Anybody need a haircut? They ask, laughing. Finally, it's Nana Aku's turn. She sits in the special grandparent chair with Zara next to her. Zara clutches her quilt tightly and her voice shakes when she gives her introduction. This is my Nana Aku and she's from Ghana, a country in West Africa. Nana Aku squeezes Zara's shoulders and starts talking. Hello, children. I'm sure you've seen the marks on my face. Has anyone seen anything like them before? No, I'll say all of the children. These marks were a gift from my parents who were happy and proud that I was born. She continues, I am likewise proud to wear them. Most Ghanaian parents don't celebrate in this way anymore, but it was once an important tradition. Zara watches her eyes wide as cups as Nana Aku walks slowly around the circle so everyone can see her face up close. It's interesting, she says, that in this country, I often notice people who put tattoos on their body that have a special meaning. Yours are way better than tattoos, Theodore says, because they grew up with you. Nana Aku smiles. Why, thank you, young man, she says. And I brought some special makeup so that each of you can have beautiful African symbols on your faces, too. The kind that wash off. My expert helper will hold up her quilt, which shows some of the symbols that you can choose from. The other students look at Zara expectantly. She unfolds the quilt with care. Today, I'm going to choose the Besisaka symbol. It looks like a flower, and my Nana told me it stands for power and unity. Nana Aku paints the symbol onto Zara's cheek in gold while Zara holds very still. The other children clap when it's all done. Come and choose your favorite symbol, Zara tells them. Alejo, who wants to be a beatboxer, points to the Hiwamindua symbol because he thinks it looks like a keyboard. Nana Aku tells him it means high quality and excellence. Bisu wants to be a veterinarian and picks the Denkum symbol, which is shaped like a crocodile, one of her favorite animals. It stands for cleverness. Peter and Inez decide on the Adwo symbol, which looks like the inside of a sliced apple with two identical halves. Twins like us, Peter says. Nana says the symbol means peace and quiet. Like mommy and daddy say, we never give them, Inez says. Nana Aku paints and paints until every child has their own design. The other grandparents choose symbols for themselves, too. Zara's face glows as she watches Nana Aku fold up her quilt to go home. And this time, it's Zara who gives her a very special, not like anyone else's Nana, one of those big hugs, the kind that wrap you around like a sweater. So I thought this week one cool thing that we could do for our craft for our book was to look to see if you could find a symbol that you think represents you. So if you click the link in the email from the church, you'll be able to go right 
to the website that has a list of lots of the, lots of these Adinkra symbols, like the ones that are here and many, many more. So you can look at the symbols, see if you can find one that you like. See if you can find one that matches your, your personality and then try to draw it. Either draw it on a piece of paper or if you have face paints, you could even try to draw it on your face or you could even try to draw it on your hand, which I think would be really fun. All right. Thanks for reading. Nana Aku goes to school with me. Have a great week.